Guys, let's let's just talk about something real fast, okay? Let's just visit here. There, there, there's something in this sport known as the post-fight depression. And I learned that expression from Brian Stan. Now, I had felt it every time a fight was done. But like so many other things in life, I thought it was only me. Oh, there's something wrong with me. I thought I was weird. And I'm not talking about if you lose. I mean, even if you win, there's so much hype. There's so much of your life. There's built. There, people are calling, right? Some of the media. You go to the practice room, whatever it is, you've got all this focus on you. And that fight stuff, boy, it's gone. They don't say a word. And there's just something about it. I mean, the, the, the fame, if you will. And you don't have to be a massive fight. It's, you're famous in your own little bubble. Fame is a drug. Somebody takes that away and it brings you down. There's this down. Okay. Now, the down is somewhat unique. Or at least it's something that a wrestler has largely overcome because he worked on it. The way a wrestling term works, us wrestlers agree to fight anybody. We're so tough and all these different things. It's all we know. I never in my life, had a thousand wrestling matches. I'm making that up, but I bet you I'm close. Been wrestling since I was nine years old, wrestled all three seasons, took seven weeks off a year. I bet you I've had close to a thousand matches. I've never had anyone ask me, will you wrestle him? Not do you want to wrestle him. Will you? You have to. You need to. I, these things have never been. I was no part. I was no part of who stepped on the mat against me. Which is why when you come over to fighting and they offer you a fight and people turn it down, I don't understand it. I mean, you're, you're speaking a language I don't get. I don't respect LeBron James. LeBron James will step on the court and he doesn't give a damn who steps on it against him. If the guy he was planning on blocking gets hurt and they bring in a rookie that he never studied for, he stays out there and he shuts up. He doesn't ask for a new contract. He doesn't demand more money. If LeBron's shoulder hurts, he'll see the trainer. He'll do the best that he can. But when it's time for tip-off, he steps onto the court. And Brady does the same thing. And Tiger Woods and Sabrina, they do the same thing. And then you get into the tough guy business. Somebody somewhere made the mistake one time of asking the guy, will you fight him? That never should have happened. On day one, that phone should have told you who your opponent is going to be. We never should have got into this debate and this back and forth and this group think and asking athletes, will you compete with this guy? It just doesn't work that way. And if you think that it does, then you're disagreeing with the model of the NHL, of Major League Baseball, of the NBA, of the Olympic Games, of the NCAA, this is who you're disagreeing with. You're not disagreeing with me. None of those athletes get to sit down and work at a new contract based on who's coming opposite of them. In a wrestler's world, guys, this is a Kamar Usman piece. Okay, I'm burying my lead here. Kamar's a wrestler, national champion, damn good. Candidate for the Olympic Games. When Kamar shows up to a tournament having no idea who he's going to draw, Stepping on the mat whenever the voice over the PA tells him to. If he wins, he has 40 minutes and they're going to do it to him again. If he loses, he has 40 minutes and they're going to do it to him again. Are you aware of that? That shouldn't be a big deal. This is the way life should work. But it tends to not, and it definitely doesn't happen this way in mixed martial arts. When Kamara shows up to an event and competes with somebody that he never knew he was going to compete with until he walked out there 40 minutes later, he's got to do it again. Somebody else, total strength that he doesn't know. He does not know who that's going to be because it's a bracket. He doesn't know if that person's going to win or lose. He doesn't know if he's going to win or lose. He doesn't know if he go to the A side or the B side. But 40 minutes later, he sacks up and he walks out there. It's a big deal. When you come to the world of MMA and you're asked to go to work three times a year and you can't do it for whatever that reason is, and God bless you, I want you to be okay. You're not my kind of guy, just so you understand. You and I are not going to be hanging out if you can't sack up three days a year. Now, 
you want to have this great debate, right? You're, you're having a debate right now. Is Kobe Covington the number one contender? Is Rachmaninoff the number one contender? Is Bahal Muhammad the number one contender? Wrong, wrong, wrong. The number one contender is obviously Kamara Usman. This isn't even a debate. If you ask Colby, who's the number one contender? He'll tell you it's Kamara Usman. He'll say, but that doesn't matter. He's not going to fight for it. He just lost for it. He's down and out. He's hanging his head. He's not doing interviews. He's not answering his phone. He's not in the gym. All of those things will be true. They just shouldn't be. And they weren't true 18 years ago when Kamara was a candidate for the Olympic Games. He need a week. He need a month. He's going to end up taking three months. I'm just telling you how the story goes. I've seen this a million times. You got to digest. You got to decompress. There was so much emotionally and physically and blah 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 blah. There was nothing more on this, and there wasn't those tournaments that he grew up doing, taking on whoever stepped to him every 40 minutes, whether he felt good or not. You don't know if you're going to get hurt in the first match. You're damn sure going to get sore. You might break your nose, you might swell your ear, you might black your eye. You're going to show up anyway for whoever comes against you. That's what Kamar Usman knows. That's all he knows. It's very honorable. But the way that this sport works, they're going to move on without him. How does he make that stop? How does he force our sport to break the trend that they're doing right now? They're trying to find a number one contender, and they got a damn good argument going on. They don't even have his name in it. He is obviously the number one contender. Anytime you lose the bell, you fall down a spot. So what does he do? Leon's not talking about fighting him. He's not talking about fighting Leon. He's going to take I'm telling I'll tell you what's going to happen. It's going to be three months before we hear the name Kamar Usman. Why? Why doesn't he do it today? Gets the hair of his ass, calls the UFC, calls in every favor he got. They're going to tell her, hey, why don't you just calm down? Hey, you did a great job. You've been a pile of money. You set some records. You're right there with St. Pierre, man. You're on the Mount Rushmore. Why don't you, thank, I appreciate that. Click, click, call, my, call the next guy. When that guy blows the smoke up your ass, th th thank him very much and call your next guy. And if all of them keep sticking to the same thing, get on an airplane and get out there and wait outside Dana's office until he has time for you. You cannot accept this. That is the number one contender. It's not a debate. It's obviously Usman, but the history of this sport says he's going to do nothing for roughly three months. We're going to move on. We're going to figure out what he wants to do. Are we going to change him weight classes? He's still a big draw. He's still got a good name. We can find something for him to do to get a paycheck around here. It's not going to be contendership. It's not going to be title fights. He's got to stop that. How's he do it? How does he do it? History says there's nearly zero chance that all the fights that we have right now step to it because they're a bunch of wimps. No offense. We got Moscow and we got Burns, okay? Are they both going to show? That's a big fight right there, and Kamara should be demanding to be the backup for it. Wonder Boy just got announced for something yesterday or at least asked for something. I read a, a, a headline on Wonder Boy. We're now talking about Blahal and Rachmanov are getting together. Whatever the fight is that's at welterweight, Kamar Usman should be demanding and banging the drums. He'll be the backup for it. Openly. I openly humble myself. I openly admit I am now going into a position I didn't think I would be, and I would never have to do with the belt. I'm humbling myself, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to fight again. You know I'm going to fight again. You're going to book me again, and you're going to pay me again. And we all know these things. I'm telling you, you're going to do it now. Not in three months. Now. You want to know who the number one contender is at 170 pounds, you dumb sons of bitches? You want to know who it is? It's Kamara Usman.